Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. And this time, I mean it. Those previous 140 tutorials, terrible. This one is pretty good. So what we're going to be creating is this cool futuristic light array thing. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to call it. I usually make the tutorial and then come up with some name, add like advanced to it, and then people are like, wow, this is great. But anyway, I'm sure this tutorial will be called advanced spin effects. So we'll see. <laughs> All right, so pretty cool. You're probably thinking it's really just the sound design, and you're right, it is. But I still have to show you how to do the visuals so that uh, the tutorial can be complete. But in all seriousness, there are some cool things we're going to be learning. So, for example, all of these cool kind of animation elements are created inside of After Effects with no third-party tools. So we're doing it all right inside of After Effects, and uh, you know some really interesting looks that we're going to create. And basically, we're going to go through each one of these different elements, create them, and then we're going to composite them together into the final design. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a new composition. We'll make it 720p and 300 frames long. We'll call this uh, spectral, and we'll hit OK. So what I want to do is create a black solid background. So we'll just create a new solid, we'll call this uh, background, hit OK. Then we're going to create another new solid, and this is going to be our audio. All right, so I have a music file, I'm going to drop it into our comp, and I'll hit LL. So you can see we just have some audio here, and you can pretty much use any audio that you want, and I'll try to include something in the project file. We can just shut it off for now. We're just going to use the audio to create some of the cool spectral audio waveform effect. We'll click on the audio layer and we'll choose effect generate audio spectrum. And then what we can do is choose the audio layer, which is our music. And we can kind of scrub through here and see a little bit of the movement. We can turn up the maximum height and that'll give us a little bit more of what's going on. Now, the way the spectrum works versus the way that the waveform works is that the spectrum is like a frequency range. So your low frequencies and your high frequencies. So when you turn up the bass, you're turning up the low frequencies. And when you turn up the treble, you're turning up the high frequencies in the mid-range here. We're going to use this spectral information to create a cool circular animation. What we're going to do is come over here and select the ellipse tool, the circular mask tool. And if we come in here, turn on the title action, say if we can see the middle of the area of that layer, and we're going to click in there and hold down control alt shift and that will create a circle that is perfectly round and from that point and we'll make it about this large so I'm also going to go to that mask and set it to none because I don't actually want to mask the layer and we can hide that then we're going to come in here and change the path from none to mask one so now our spectral information is now circular so already we can do some really cool stuff. So let's change the color to white and uh, just kind of focus on the silhouette of the design. And let's go through some of the different uh, settings here. So we have the frequency bands. So that's how many of these things there are. We have the height, of course. Now, one problem is that the low frequencies are really large compared to all the other frequencies. So what we can do is let's switch this off and then I'm just going to run this off. So see the start frequency right here? I can actually move it over and cut those frequencies off. So we say start it right here, and then we only have to worry about these middle frequencies and the high frequencies. So if I take this point and lower it, you can see we change where the high frequencies start as well. And by the way, if you hold down control, when you move a slider that seems to be moving too fast, it'll actually slow it down by a factor of 10. So that's helpful. Um, all right, so let's switch back to the mask one. And we have a pretty uniform uh, spectral effect here. And let's take a look at some of the settings. So right here we have our option to be inside or outside. So if we go side A, that's going to be inside. Side B, it's going to be outside. And then the AB is going to be split. We also have a display option. We can change it to analog. 
kind of cool, and analog dots. So we could check that out. And also if you do A, you only see one line. So you can already kind of see how I did the previous effects. I'm just using multiple copies of this spectral effect. Now, if we preview a little bit of this, let's hit preview, you can see that it's pretty fast, it's pretty uh, sporadic. But if we increase the duration, it'll actually sort of average out the movements and somewhat slow it down a little bit. So let's just start throwing together a few different looks here. Let's switch it to B side, so it's on the outside, and let's duplicate the layer. And let's set the transfer mode of both of the layers, so hit F4, and we'll set it to screen. And for the second layer, I'm going to switch it to analog dots, and I'm also going to increase the maximum height, so check this out. See the dots, they sort of run away from the last point. So now we create kind of an interesting effect where all of the dots are just a little bit ahead of the line. So we could bring that in a touch. We could even take the bottom copy again, duplicate it, and let's put it on top here. And let's switch it to A side and maybe switch it to analog lines. And so now we've got this kind of an effect, which is cool. We can even lower, hit T, lower the opacity of that layer just to create a little separation. And then maybe duplicate that layer again. Maybe switch it to digital and increase the bands on the frequency. And then increase the height. Um, we can also hit M and we can select the mask and we can actually rescale the mask. So we could scale the mask down and do some fun stuff that way. So as you can see, it's just, it's very experimental. You want to just play around with some different ideas. Let's just leave this one as it is. So this will be one of our mini designs. And then let's go to the project and we'll take our spectral here and we'll hit control D and then we'll open up that one, spectral two. So in this one, let's change it up a little bit and maybe come up with some slightly different settings. So let's just delete the first two there and you know, just try something different. One thing I like to do is let's switch it to analog lines. And let's come over here to the effects and we're going to add the force motion blur effect. So check this out. We drop this on here. It's going to create some motion blur based on the movement of this audio. And we can also take the audio, slide it over. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to play around with some of the settings. So I'm going to bring the frequency of the bands down and maybe take the audio duration down. So as I do that and you hold down control, you're going to see this sort of ghosting. And the ghosting is basically from the motion blur that we've added. So we can have more steps and that will smooth it out quite a bit. You know, obviously it'll slow it down as well, but you know, making something look good is sometimes worth the extra time it takes to render. But now I can duplicate this, control D, and maybe give it a few different settings. So let's get rid of the motion blur and let's switch it to digital lines and then let's set it to A side and maybe increase the bands and, or actually let's do A, B and lower the opacity here. So that's looking pretty interesting. Maybe we'll duplicate it again and let's do some analog dots and let's go to the A side and we'll turn the opacity of it back up and now we've got this kind of effect. We could even turn up the thickness which will make the dots a little bit bigger. Turn the softness down. All right, so this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and move on to creating some of these other spinning effects. So let's create a new comp. Same settings, 1280 and 300 frames long. We'll hit OK. And we're going to create a new solid. And we'll call this background. And we'll create another new solid. And we'll call this lines. And we'll hit OK. What I want to do is, again, take the ellipse tool and draw a circle into the middle of the layer. So we'll come in here, maybe about that large. And we're going to select the layer, uncheck the mask mode, and we'll choose Effect, Generate, Vegas. So it's at the bottom there. Now what this is going to do is create some cool lines along the mask path. So we'll change it to Mask, and there we have all of our little lines. Now I'm going to bring the segments down, and we can play with the color. We can switch it to white here. We can also rotate this. So 
let's add an expression to the rotation. So I'll alt click on the rotation and we'll type time star times 150. So that's going to start spinning it. And actually I want it to spin the other way. So let's do star times negative 150. So we've just got this cool spinning effect. Very straightforward. So now what we can do is set it to screen, duplicate it, control D, and then, you know, just change the segment amount. So watch this. We could scale the layer down, hit S, scale it down a bit. Then we've got a copy. We can make it a little thicker, maybe less, a little more hardness to it. We could duplicate that layer, maybe give it four segments, scale it a little bit, and maybe shorten it as well. So what we could do is change the length, and that'll give it a shorter path. So that's cool. So this is the basic idea. Let's create a few more variations. So we'll duplicate that. Maybe turn the thickness up here and the length. All right, so this is cool. So this is going to be our spin comp. So we'll call this spin lines and we'll hit OK. So pretty straightforward. Let's create one more comp. So we're going to create a new comp and we'll call this random lines and hit OK. And we can actually take the first two lines from this first one and copy it and paste it just to save a little time. So in this case, we want to do a lot of the same stuff, but have a few more dynamic type of elements. For this first one, let's set the segments to three and maybe turn up the width a bit and turn the hardness up a little bit. And that's cool. Now I want to create another one that just has dots. So what I'll do is duplicate the layer and we'll hit return and we'll call this dots. And I'm going to get rid of the Vegas effect. I'm actually going to add a different one called stroke. So we'll come down here, take the generate stroke effect, put it on the layer and we're going to switch it to masks, which is already on. Great. Then if I solo the layer, I can turn up the brush size and then I can turn the spacing up really high. So see this, it starts to create little dots. Now I want to use this as my line but I want it to spin around in a circle. So what I'm going to do is use the layer below it and then we'll set the track mat to Luma mat. So now we've created a circular effect with just the dots and we can go into the mat and we can adjust uh, you know, the opacity point and stuff like that so we can create a nice effect. We can even add additional segments to just give it a little more variation but we'll use the one for now. Then we'll parent this layer to the dots layer, make some more room, and then take both of those layers and scale it down. So we'll just scale it down a bit here. Here we're starting to just add a little bit more variation. And here we just start randomly duplicating layers and stuff. So control D, let's scale this down here and maybe thin it out a bit and maybe have like eight segments. I'll make it seven. Yeah, seven, that's definitely the right one. Uh, let's duplicate that again and we'll hit M and we can just scale the mask down. So we'll double click it, hold down control shift alt, scale it down and maybe do for this one, let's just do one segment. Now I want to create another thicker ring. So what I'm going to do is take the two layers that we use the track mat and duplicate both of them. So let's change it to aqua so we can see the difference between these layers and let's hit control D and I'm going to do something a little bit differently so on this layer I'm going to make the brush size really large okay now you can see what's happening is when I make it large like that the spacing is a little bit different so let's set the track mat to none really quick and while we align this so we want it to just scale it so it just perfectly fits in that circle and remember you can hold control to get a much finer uh, position. So that's good. Turn up the hardness and then we'll switch it back to LumaMat. And then we can take this second copy and hit S and we can scale it down to kind of stick it right in there. And if we want to make it thicker, we just need to make our mask a little bit thicker. So we can just increase this and now we've got a cool effect. Now again, we want to go ahead and give it some randomness. So let's do plus, you know, 250 offset the time of those a little bit more and let's add some more kind of smaller details so let's see this one's pretty cool let's duplicate this one that 
just kind of the thinner ones, control D. And let's reset the layer scale and hit M, mask. And we'll just scale that mask up a bit. There we go. And let's just bring the width of these down. Let's make it nice and thin. And let's do like six. Shorten them up a bit. And hit S and just bring it a little closer to the other ones there. All right, so this is pretty good. Let's make one more in the middle and maybe scale it down a bit. Just do like maybe three and then make it nice and thick here. All right, so very, very scientific process, I know. All right, so now we've got all these basic effects together. We could probably spend a little bit more time randomizing them a little bit better so that they don't all start at the same time. And then what we want to do is pre-render them out. So instead of having to keep rendering them every time we use them, we're going to pre-render them. So what I'm going to do is come over to the project, take all of these design comps and drop them into a new folder. We'll just call this design elements. And then we'll take these four comps and choose composition, add to render queue. So we'll come in here, hit tilde, and click on the output module, hold down the shift and click on the other output module. And we're gonna change this to a QuickTime format. So we're gonna make a template. And we'll just call this QuickTime JPEG. And I might have one in there, so we'll call it version two. And we'll click edit. And let's set it to QuickTime and the format to photo JPEG. Now I don't always get into settings and stuff like that, but for this, um, this is a good intermediate format for design elements and uh, we'll hit OK and we'll hit OK. So now all of the settings have changed to that setting and you also notice that I have that setting now available to me, QuickTime JPEG. And then we'll come over here to the output module location and let's set where these files are going to be saved. So in my spin effects folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called render. And let's render these elements straight to that folder. Now just double check that your in and out point is set to a good length. Maybe 300 probably is a good length. Um, but if you're in a rush, maybe you could just do 150 frames or something like that. And uh, then we're going to hit render and I'll see you guys in a little bit. It'll be instantaneous. And they're done. It's like the microwave on the Bagel Bites commercial, just instantaneous. So I went ahead and rendered out a couple of the other ones that I created, and uh, we're going to import them. So we'll just drag them into the project, and we'll stick them in the design elements folder. So we've got all these different elements. What we can do is create our new composition where we're going to do our sort of design. So we'll just call this design spin out. Now this is where the fun begins, if it hasn't already, which it hasn't. Now in this comp, we're gonna bring all of our layers and effects together. But first, I wanna actually create the light array that you see in the original example. So it's these sort of four round lights. So to create the lighting array, what we're gonna do is create a new solid and we're gonna make it white. And we want the width to be one fourth of the width horizontally of the comp. So for example, I want there to be four panels. So what we'll do is we'll do divided by four, and that's gonna give us a value of 320. So then what we can do is set the value of the height, and then what we can do is set the value of the height to 320 as well. So now we have a perfect square. Then we're gonna pre-compose this layer. So we'll come down to the very bottom, pre-compose, and we're gonna leave all the attributes in the comp. So we're gonna call this light shape, hit okay. And then we're going to duplicate it and we're going to add a fast blur. So we'll choose effect, blur, fast blur. And we'll hide the other layer here for just a second. And then we'll take the bottom layer and we'll set the track mat to alpha mat. So what this does is creates like a dimming effect around the edges like maybe a real light panel might. So just a simple little blur and bam, we increased our production value by like 100 lumens. It's amazing. And now I want to pre-compose this together. So we'll take both layers, choose layer, pre-compose, move all attributes. We'll call this light panel and hit OK. So I've got the one layer here. I'm actually going to open it up and I want to resize the comp. So I'm in the light panel comp. 
let's go to the comp settings and let's turn this back down to 320 by 320 and hit OK. And that way it's a perfectly square comp. Now one of the things I want to do is add a little bit of space around the edges. So let's take both layers, hit S and we'll scale it down a touch. So then we'll close this, come back into the main comp. So now I want to add a little bit of randomness to the brightness. So I'm going to take this, hit T, hold down Alt, click on opacity on the stopwatch and we're going to type in an expression. So we're going to type wiggle parentheses, we'll do 5 comma 50. So what that means is five times a second I want to create a random value uh, between 50. So that's going to see if we look at our opacity here it's going to kind of flicker on and off. And uh, that's what we want. So now we want to create our array of four light panels. So let's move it over to the left here, duplicate it, duplicate it, control D and duplicate it. Four copies. For anyone interested in precise pixel alignment, we've got a feature here called the Align. So if you go to Window, bring up the Align tool. I'm sure you've never used it ever before in your life. And if you have, well, you know, good for you. What the Align tool does is helps you kind of pixel perfect things. So earlier, we made this comp exactly one fourth the width of our entire comp. So what I'll do is come over here to the Align tool and align this one to the left and it clicks over perfectly aligning to the left. Then I'll take this one and align it to the right and I get perfectly alignment. So by the way, just to show you that, bam, and then right in the middle. So pretty useful for just getting exactly what you want. Now what about the two in the middle here? So what I can actually do is if I take my first one, align it to the left and my last one and align it to the right, and then the ones in the middle will automatically be aligned to fit the space. So watch this. I'll select all of them and we're going to click this button right here. Horizontal distribution. All right, that was a little hard to see. So let's offset a few of these and then we'll select all four and click horizontal distribution. Bam. It gets better. Watch, I'll hit S, scale this down and let's duplicate a few. And I'll take this one, align it to the left, this one, align it to the right and then select all of them, control A, and distribute. So now I've put them perfectly equal distance across this entire thing. So very, very cool way to distribute layers and uh, work with them. So we're just gonna work with uh, four. So let's uh, reset this. And we'll put one over to the left, one to the right, and then select them all and distribute perfectly. So this is our basic light panel setup. So now let's take all four layers, choose layer pre-compose, and we'll call this panel. And then we're going to come over to the effects and type in polar coordinates, drop that onto our layer, set it to rectangle to polar, and turn up the interpolation. Whoa, what just happened? All right, so now we've got this sort of circular light panel. Now, because of the way we set this up, we can actually edit it and get it to look the way we want. So let's jump inside to the pre-comp and let's play around with the shape of the light panel. So if we go inside of the actual shape here, we can maybe take the rounded rectangle tool and maybe create sort of a thinner one and if you wheel on your mouse you can actually make the bevel a little smaller there we go center this a bit so now if we go inside of this comp everything looks good and we go inside the panel and that looks good and then the final design here we go so maybe we want a little less space so let's go into the light panel comp and let's scale this up a bit and we'll go to the output. So because we set that up perfectly mathematically to the width of the comp, it's going to create perfect even spaces uh, for this light panel. Now if we want to animate this, what we could do is use the distort transform effect and take the rotation, hold down alt and type uh, time times maybe 50 and that will basically create a nice spinning effect. Let's do like time times 150. 
Okay, so we have our animated uh, life raft, perfect. All right, let's go and take some of our pre-rendered elements and drop them into our comp. So we'll bring this one out, set the transfer mode to screen, and let's take the spin lines, bring that out, uh, screen that as well. And maybe the random lines, let's bring that out and set it to screen. So let's just take a look at one of these at a time. So the random lines, let's scale this down a bit, kind of put it inside. Now I think our light panels need to be squished down a little bit. So I'll go to the light shape and just shrink it down. All right, that's a little bit better. So random lines, we want to fit that right inside. And then we'll take the spectral and maybe scale it just to the outside of the ring. Maybe I'll shrink that down a little bit more too. It's pretty subjective. If I made this tutorial again, it would probably come out completely different. So feel free to experiment, play with stuff. If you don't like what I'm doing, just leave a really nasty comment. I mean, just do what you want to do. Here's this other layer, the spin lines. Let's scale this down a bit. Really small, so there we go. By the way, full resolution looks pretty good as well. So let's just kind of take a look at the animation, just kind of see how it looks with everything together. Okay, so this is not bad. I might take our light panel, duplicate it, and scale it down, kind of have a secondary light panel in there. Let's see. And we'll take this layer and squeeze it down. I'm also going to take the layer with the large fragmented ring and duplicate it. And I'm going to scale it up. So what I want to do is actually take the ellipse tool and draw a circle just around the inside elements and subtract them. So here, let's see. So this way we just have the outside area. Then we're going to choose blur, CC radial blur, and we'll set it to fading zoom and then increase the value. All right, let's put this below all of our different layers. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. I might even take the first spectral effect and lower the opacity just a touch. Let's see here, let's add a little bit of color. Let's create a new adjustment layer. And we'll choose effect, color correction, curves. And because we've designed everything on a black background, we can actually go in and start playing around with the color. So we'll bring the red channel down, the blue channel up. Maybe go to the green channel and just put a little contrast curve here. And so that looks nice. Um, probably want to add some glow, so stylize glow. I like to do it fairly soft, so let's see. And the other thing is, you know, you want to create a little bit of separation. So maybe we lower the opacity of some of these other elements so that not everything is so highly contrasted. So again, lower the value there. And again, this just comes down to taste and just kind of getting things to look okay and not seem so out of place. All right, so that's cool. Let's see if we have some of our other elements that might be fun to throw in here. Let's see. All right, this spec B one could be fun. Let's take this, drop it in here, set it to screen, and let's put it inside and offset the time so we kind of create this sort of electrical disturbance. I don't know. Looks good to me. I'm leaving it in. Oh, I don't know. We could take this one, set it to screen, maybe drop it below the color correction. We can even do a thing like add curves or contrast to this layer. So for example, if we add contrast, it'll just kind of leave just the dots, which could be cool. Nice. Um, and then the other thing we might want to do is add some different colorization. So if we come down here to the second light panel, Let's say we want to give it like a red color. So let's take it outside of the adjustment layer. Remember this adjustment layer has our color correction on it. 
And a couple of things that we need to do because we don't have a black background. Um, well, what we could do is just come inside here and create one. So new solid black and we'll put it down here below. That's easy enough. So what I'm going to do now is choose effect color correction curves and we're going to have a red tint. So we'll turn up the red, bring the blue down and green down a little bit. And let's set this to screen. There we go. And then we want to add like a nice bright glow. So we'll choose stylize glow and we'll crank this up. Now another thing we could do besides the curves is we could try to just do a tint effect and just tint it red. And then we can just boost the glow. So that actually looks a little bit better. Sorry to waste your time there. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Let's go and rearrange a few elements here. So our light panel, now let's make sure that's set to screen. All right, so this is looking pretty good for the base animation. And the next part is essentially animating it on in an interesting way. So what I'm going to do is create another adjustment layer. And I want to add an effect called bulge. And what this is going to allow us to do is create a cool kind of distortion or deform. So we'll scale this shape area up a bit. And here you can see as I change the height of the bulge, it stretches out this sort of inner area. Now I'm going to scale this down a bit. And now you can kind of see what happens when this uh, gets bulged out. So what we'll do is we'll animate the bulge from the start. And we'll set a keyframe, hit U. And we'll come down here and we'll turn the value down nice and low. And then back up to zero. And we can actually go maybe a little bit beyond zero and then go down again and go back to zero. So what that will do is make it so that it goes bulge then back up and it kind of has like a little wiggle to it at the end. So let's hit F9. All right, and let's move this over and maybe shift it over in time a bit. Space these keyframes out a little bit and we create the nice bulge effect. Now, as far as animating this on and sort of in an interesting flickering pattern, if we take a look at the original example, basically what is happening is we're just sort of turning on layers on and off and creating, you know, this randomness as if it's powering up or something like that. And the reality is this just takes a little bit of time. It just takes a little bit of turning things on and off, keyframing a few layers. There's definitely a lot of room to be creative and to play around with all these different effects and uh, hopefully you guys can come up with some cool stuff. I think another thing that does help uh, as it does help promote the website which is using some lens flares. So we've got uh, a plugin called Optical Flares where we can add some nice uh, flashes of light. So let's jump into the options and load one of the lens flare presets. Now, if you search the blog for the conspiracy presets, we just created some additional lens flare presets and they're pretty nice looking. So let's open up one and let's set the transfer mode to screen and maybe just stick it right in the middle there. So if we go to frame one, we could set a keyframe, uh, turn the brightness down to zero. We'll move forward, set it to like 100 down to maybe 50 and then down to zero. So we get like a nice flash and then maybe move forward and do one more large flash. So and a nice fade out. There we go. Maybe give it a little more blue easily tinted a bit. Now, of course, this is optional. It's not necessary. Just a nice little touch to spice it up a bit. Of course, you can get optical flares uh, from videocopilot.net, uh, one of our great products. 
And recently we came out with a new model pack for Element 3D called Jet Strike. You gotta check it out. There's just a ton of really, really high quality aircraft. All of this stuff was all rendered inside of After Effects. can check out all the uh, animations and all the different stuff that comes with the product. We also have a separate product called Flight Kit that includes some other cool things like aerial explosions, some sky maps, 200 aircraft sounds, as well as a nice heat distortion plugin. So definitely check that out. Um, again, thank you guys for watching. My name is Andrew Kramer, and we will see you next time.